Today actually I'm going to show you some basics that we use for some of our other designs. It's a quick cake pop, my version of course, which is always going to be an easy version. I'm going to show you a regular little cake pop that we use for the heads and also a multicolored cake pop. A little bit hard to see, but this one's white and pink. Let's get started. If you're an avid baker, you always have some leftover cake in the freezer. If it's very well sealed, it should last for a long time. So if you're looking for a project to do one afternoon or you have to make a quick project, this is a great one. A lot of times you have a lot of this stuff left around. So I've just put my cake in a bowl and I've melted down some um, white almond bark. Now almond bark is basically the same as candy melts, but it's less expensive and you can find it on almost any aisle of any grocery store. So I've just melted it down in a plastic bowl here. And I'm going to pour in about mm, maybe a half a cup for one layer of cake while I have my mixer on. So you're just going to let it mix until it's crumbly. And you can kind of see here, it's just a fine crumble. And that is easy to form into our cake balls. So I've just got a small tray here lined with wax paper. I'm going to start to make my cake balls. You need about two tablespoons for each ball. And you kind of just mash it in your hand like this. You know, let the chocolate kind of hold it together and then start to roll it. Now if you find that it's a little too, um, if you find that it doesn't want to ball together, go ahead and stick that in the fridge for just a few minutes. Let it cool down. And then basically you're just going to roll it in your hands like this. And then take one of your skewers Stick them in the almond bark or your candy melt or your white chocolate. Get a nice good coat there and stick it in. This will create a nice base. So let's do that one more time, about two tablespoons. Roll it into a ball. And then my trick to this is after you've got these made, stick them in the freezer for about 30 minutes to an hour. Get them nice and chilled so that everything's holding together real well. Cool your white chocolate and make it nice solid and then you're ready to dip. So while our cake pops are chilling down, we need to prep our candy melts for dipping. So if you melt these just as they are, they're really not thin enough to get the swirl effect that we're going for or to not get clumping when you dip. So what I do is add a couple tablespoons of Crisco or any kind of white shortening. Now you can continue to add until you get the consistency that you want, but a couple tablespoons usually does the trick. So once you have your shortening in there, then you go ahead and just melt this down. Candy melts you can do in the microwave if you want to. You do about half power for a one minute at a time. If you do it at half power, you're not going to get any scorching, any burning. So one minute at a time and then even cut it down to half a minute until you get the smooth consistency that you want. So I deepened the color just a little bit so you can really get the swirl effect a little better on camera. So you really want to get a, a nice thick coat on here. Get your alternate color in there right away so they just really meld together. You don't want a lot. And then you just start spinning slowly, very slowly, until all the excess is off. And it's just a real slow spin.
there you go. Get that really nice swirled bowling ball effect. It's perfectly smooth. The two colors are all melded together and that's it. So I hope you had fun learning how to do my basic cake pop. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me at the artoffrosting.blogspot.com and on Facebook at The Art of Frosting. Thanks for watching. See you all again next time.